Good morning. I would like to welcome you back to the John F. Kennedy Center's 16th Annual League Conference. And our keynote for this morning, the amazing Jess Tom. Jess is co-founder of Tourette's Hero and may or may not lead a secret double life as a superhero. Artist, play worker, and expert fundraiser, Jess currently helps coordinate a large play project in South London. Jess has had tics since she was a child but wasn't diagnosed with Tourette's until she was in her 20s. With some encouragement from her friends, Jess decided to turn her tics into a source of imaginative creativity, and the Tourette's Hero Project was born. Please join me in welcoming Jess Tarn. Ketchup, biscuit, cats. I love pizza bread. Ketchup, biscuit, biscuit. Hello, I'm Jess. I'm a writer, artist, and part-time superhero. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit. And to prove it, here's a picture of me in my blue and white superhero costume. Hedgehog and mask with the flappy ears. Biscuit. I also have Tourette syndrome. Biscuit. A neurological condition that means I make movements and noises I can't control, called tics. Biscuit. Having Tourette's means I'm neurologically incapable of staying on message. Biscuit. So a good amount of what I'm about to say will be a surprise to everyone. Biscuit. <laughs> Including me. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit. On the plus side though, Biscuit, it does mean I only ever need to write half a talk. Biscuit. Biscuit. Hedgehog, cat. And awkward silences aren't something I worry about either. Biscuit. 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 Before I begin in earnest, I'd just like to thank the Kennedy Centre, Biscuit, for inviting me to speak at what I'm sure will be an incredible conference. Biscuit. Right then, Biscuit. There's three things you need to know straight away. Biscuit. Firstly, you're going to hear the words Biscuit and Hedgehog a lot in the next hour. Biscuit. <laughs> yes. Biscuit. Biscuit. And just so nothing gets lost in translation. Biscuit. When I say Biscuit, I'd like you to think cookie. Biscuit! <laughs> yes. Biscuit! I hope you're all doing it. Biscuit! <laughs> cookie! <laughs> Biscuit. Secondly, if I say something funny, you're absolutely allowed to laugh. In fact, it'll be a bit weird if you don't. Biscuit. That's <laughs> your. Finally, several times a day, Biscuit, my tics intensify and I completely lose control of my body and speech. Biscuit. These episodes, which I call ticking fits, look seizure-like and need similar management. Biscuit. Uh, Biscuit, if this happens while I'm speaking, my support worker will help me. Biscuit. And Betty will take over with, with a lap dance or a leopard. <laughs> she doesn't know about that yet. <laughs> Biscuit. Biscuit. I'm going to give a brief description of myself to anyone who might find this useful. Biscuit. Hedgehog! I love cats! I'm an ambidextrous hippo. Okay, I'm going to try and give a brief description of myself. <laughs> Biscuit. I'm a 30 something white woman, Biscuit, of average build, with curly brown hair and a very cool wheelbarrow wheelchair. <laughs> Cat! Wheelbarrow wheelchair. Biscuit. Hedgehog. It's a wheelchair, just for, to avoid confusion. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit. Having Tourette's also gives me a very wiggly body. Biscuit. That's constantly on the move. My most frequent tick involves punching my chest. Biscuit. It's happening now, <laughs> and now, and now. Biscuit. <laughs> yes! But don't wear it, worry, I'm wearing padded gloves to stop my knuckles getting cracked and sore. Biscuit. All the slides I'll be showing, Biscuit, with the ex exception of seven pictures that I'll describe in more detail when I get to them, are colourful, hand drawn cards giving the title of each section. I will read these out loud. Biscuit. Biscuit, creativity, visibility, and opportunity, a call to action. When I was asked to come and speak at Leeds, Biscuit, I got really excited, partly because of the prospect of coming to Pittsburgh, but mainly, Biscuit, because the idea of open exchange between those leading on accessibility across the arts and cultural sector captured my imagination. Biscuit, hedgehog. 
It's through the exchange of knowledge, ideas, biscuit, and resources, biscuit, and by sharing our successes and our challenges, biscuit, that sustainable social change is made possible. Biscuit, in this talk, I'm going to share with you five ideas that I feel are useful for building truly inclusive creative spaces. Biscuit. First though, Biscuit, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Tourette's and my journey from sufferer to superhero. Biscuit, yes. Uh, Biscuit, about Tourette's. Biscuit. Tourette's is one of the most frequently misunderstood conditions on the planet. Biscuit, lots of people have heard of it, but most of what they know is based on myths and stereotypes. Biscuit. Let's get some of these out of the way now. Biscuit. Swearing. Fuck it. <laughs> Biscuit. It's often characterised as the swearing disease. Biscuit. In fact, only 10% of people with Tourette's have obscene tics. Fuck it. I am one of them. <laughs> Biscuit. So, Biscuit, I'm as likely to shout about Biscuit, domestic appliances, dinosaurs, or B list celebrities as I am to swear. Biscuits! <laughs> Biscuit, it isn't a rare condition. It's estimated to affect 300,000 people in the UK alone. Biscuit, but it's on a spectrum, so it affects each person differently. Some people's tics are barely noticeable, like mine. Biscuit, <laughs> yes! Biscuit, while others will behave in the way that makes them stand out. It isn't just saying what's on your mind. Biscuit. I don't think about biscuits nearly as much as I talk about them. Biscuit. Biscuit. It's a neurological condition, not a mental health disorder, and it's not caused by bad parenting, nervousness, or demonic possession. Biscuit. People are often curious, Biscuit, about what ticks feel like. So I'd like to play a quick game to help you understand. Biscuit, and to let me test drive Tourette's. Biscuit, Biscuit, turn to the person next to you and say hello. Biscuit, Biscuit, Biscuit. Now stare into their eyes and try not to blink for as long as possible. uncomfortable. Biscuit. Biscuit. Finding my power. Biscuit. I've always considered myself to be a creative person. I studied drawing at university and completed an MA in photography after that. Biscuit. During my artistic education, Biscuit, I became interested in participatory events for children and young people. But it's through Tourette's Hero, Biscuit, that I've become truly aware of the power of creativity. Biscuit. Both the impact it can have on individual well-being, Biscuit. Biscuit. But also the role it can play in creating social change. Biscuit. Since co-founding Tourette's Hero in 2010, it's evolved in ways I could never have imagined. We use the creativity and humour to increase understanding of Tourette's Biscuit to the widest possible audience and to campaign for social justice. We do this online through tourettesero.com and on social media. Biscuit. Through creative encounters with artists, musicians, scientists and academics. By speaking out Biscuit, about the damaging impact of political policies. And by offering bespoke training for a broad range of clients. And by delivering inclusive events for children and young people. Tourette's Hero is for everyone, with and without ticks. We aim to reclaim the laughter associated with Tourette's. 
challenge myths and stereotypes and assumptions about the condition and about disability more generally and to reduce the fear around disability and help people feel more comfortable talking about it. Put simply, our mission is to change the world, Biscuit, one tick at a time, Biscuit. Why? Biscuit. Because disability isn't a niche issue. If you've got a body or mind, chances are you'll experience disability at some point in your life. Thoughtfully considering what this might mean. Biscuit, biscuit, hedgehog, biscuit can make a big difference. Biscuit, hedgehog, biscuit, and make things easier, biscuit, as your circumstances change. Tourette's hero, biscuit, began with a conversation that radically changed the way I viewed my condition. Biscuit, my friend Matthew described Tourette's as a crazy language generating machine, biscuit, and he told me not doing something creative with it would be wasteful. Biscuit, this idea took root and transformed how I thought about my life. Biscuit, it's how I came to understand my tics as my power and not my problem. Biscuit, my life was changed by a single sentence. I now believe that every conversation, question or shared laugh, Biscuit, has the potential to create change. Biscuit. My tics are my power, Biscuit, because they let me do things neurotypical people can't do, like collide words together to create incredible new concepts. Biscuit. Without my unusual neurology, Biscuit, the world wouldn't have the joy of disco penguins dancing in your dreams. Biscuit. There's a sheepdog farting dollars in the corner. Biscuit. Or star-spangled spanner, Biscuit. Through Tourette's Hero, I recast the symptoms of my condition as a creative springboard, Biscuit, and invite people to make artwork in response. I'm going to share with you some of my favourite tick illustrations. Biscuit, Hedgehog, uh, I'm going to share these with you now, Biscuit. First up, capital letters talk to themselves at night. Biscuit, the letter A and the letter B fast asleep under a patterned bedspread. Biscuit. 95% of biscuits are birds. Biscuit. A boy in a stripy shirt is about to eat a tiny bird he's selected from a sweet box full of other tiny birds. Biscuit. God's moving to Watford on Sunday. Biscuit. Hedger. A torn and weather-beaten church poster has the slogan, God's moving to Watford on Sunday, written on it. Biscuit. Biscuit. And for, the, for anyone who doesn't know this, which I imagine is most people, Watford is a very small town outside London. <laughs> Biscuit. Hedgehog. Biscuit. Stuff my mouth with pencils. Biscuit. A line drawing on graph paper showing a man with 66 red pencils stuffed in his mouth. I counted them all. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit. Alien Barbados Donkey Training Company. Biscuit. Hedgehog. <laughs> Biscuit. A black and white circular logo with an alien eyed donkey's head at the centre. Biscuit. And a tiny map of Barbados on the right. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit. Finally, I've got limbs. They're multiplying. <laughs> Computer-generated image so the two lead characters from the film Grease. Sandy is on the left and Danny is on the right. Both are wearing tight black dancewear. Biscuit. Both have arms growing out of their arms that makes them look like branches of a tree. Biscuit. Before Tourette's Hero, I found it hard to talk about Tourette's without tears. Recognising, Biscuit, the creative potential of ticks and developing the language and confidence to talk about them has had a more powerful impact than I could ever have imagined. My journey to the stage. Biscuit. Biscuit. As I'm sure you can tell by now, Biscuit, having Tourette's means I'm rarely still or quiet. Biscuit. Ticks can turn ordinary tasks like making a cup of tea or chopping vegetables into extreme sports. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit. 
they go everywhere I do. Let's get. And they're often the first thing people notice about me. Let's get. As a teenager, I used to love going to theatres and galleries. But the more my movements and noises made me stand out, the harder I found it to go. And I'm not alone. Let's get. Back in 2014, when I started work on my first stage show, Backstage in Biscuitland, I googled Tourette's Theatre. Biscuit. And nearly all the top results were accounts of people, Biscuit, with tips being asked to leave. Biscuit. I'd like to share, Biscuit, Biscuit, a monologue from Backstage in Biscuitland. Biscuit, it's, an, it's about an experience, Biscuit, that started my journey to the stage. Biscuit. I'd heard comedian Mark Thomas, Biscuit, was doing a show called Extreme Rambling, Biscuit, at the Tricycle Theatre in London, Biscuit. Loads of my friends had talked about it, so I was really keen to go, Biscuit. At that point, Biscuit, I hadn't been to the theatre for several years, Biscuit, and I'd had some upsetting conversations, a Biscuit, about my right to, Biscuit, Biscuit to access stuff and other people's right, no, Biscuit, Biscuit, not to be interrupted, Biscuit, Hedgehog, Biscuit, Hedgehog, but it felt right to see extreme rambling, Biscuit, because it was about something I was interested in. Mark Thomas walking the Palestinian separation barrier, Biscuit, Biscuit, loads of thoughts and planning went into our trip. I got in touch with Mark by email, I spoke to the theatre, and I went with two people I know really well, Matthew and Poppy. Biscuit, biscuit. We met Mark beforehand, so we had a chance to see what my tics were like. Biscuit. I was still walking at the time, but was very wobbly and needed help. Biscuit. At the start of the show, Mark introduced me. Biscuit. And let the audience know I'd be making noise. Biscuit. The first half was fantastic and completely absorbing. Biscuit. Then, Biscuit, in the interval, the front of house manager came and said, we've had some complaints about the noises you've been making and people are threatening not to come back unless you move. Biscuit. So, you know, Biscuit, would you move to the sound booth? at the side of the stage. Biscuit. He was careful to point out I didn't have to. Biscuit. But at that point I felt if people are complaining about me. Biscuit, they don't want me here. I knew I wouldn't be able to concentrate because I'd know I was unwelcome and being judged. My only option, having had that conversation, was to move. Biscuit. So Poppy, Matthew and I got up. Biscuit. We were taken backstage through a narrow corridor to the sound booth. Mark was getting ready to do the second half and was clearly uncomfortable with what was happening. Biscuit. The booth was behind glass. Biscuit. Because it was visible from the stalls, it had slatted blinds like the type we get in offices. I could see Matthew was really tense. We'd paid for the tickets and the view. Well, we couldn't really see what was happening. Biscuit. We were surrounded by equipment, and I thought, oh God, I could really muck things up if I press anything. <laughs> Biscuit. 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 The sound technician, Biscuit, who must have seen the show a hundred times, was doing a crossword. She moved up, and we sat on an assortment of computer chairs. I was gutted. We were watching something about segregation, about separation. And I wasn't welcome to watch it with other people. The show started again, and I sobbed. I absolutely sobbed. I couldn't concentrate on what Mark was saying because I felt utterly, utterly humiliated. Biscuit. Embarrassed. Biscuit. And alone. I wanted to leave straight away and never come back. It felt like an experience 
I could not or should not access because it was damaging to me. Biscuit, it didn't just speak about the theatre. It was about everything. Like, you don't have the right to be in public space in the same way as anyone else. Your experiences can only happen, Biscuit, if they don't impact on other people. Biscuit, later that evening, I looked on Twitter and I found a really nasty tweet by a woman who'd been there. Biscuit, went to political comedy thing tonight. Might have learned something, but for the Tourette's person, shouting, fuck you, Merry Christmas. Hedgehog. Biscuit. While I sat sobbing in that sound booth, Biscuit, I promised myself I'd never set foot in a theatre again. Biscuit. Thankfully, this wasn't a promise I kept. Biscuit. Instead, Biscuit, I found the only seat in the house I wouldn't be asked to leave on stage. Biscuit. <laughs> Backstage in Biscuitland and took this to the Edinburgh Fringe where it sold out and won a total theatre award. Biscuit. We've gone on tour across the UK, Europe and North America Biscuit, and we'll be taking it to Ireland, Bosnia and Australia in the fall. Biscuit. As well as telling my story, the show also promotes relaxed performance. A growing movement within UK theatre that takes a flexible approach to noise and movement Biscuit, and extends a warm invitation to everybody. Biscuit. The brilliant thing about relaxed performance Biscuit, is that everyone can benefit from being at one. Biscuit. This can include people with learning disabilities, movement disorders, autistic spectrum disorder or other neurological con conditions. Biscuit. Those with young children, babies. Biscuit. Biscuit, or just people with very loud laughs. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit. Biscuit. Many other people will choose to attend a relaxed performance, either as an access requirement or because they enjoy the inclusive environment. When they're done well, the whole audience is given permission to relax, move about, and make noise. This fosters a more exciting theatrical experience. Biscuit. I'd now like to share five key ideas that have played a crucial role in shaping my practice, my understanding, and my expectations. Hopefully, some of these will be useful in your work building a more inclusive creative sector. First up, I'm not disabled by my body. Biscuit. I'd like to start by talking about models of disability. By this, I don't mean matchstick crotches, papier-mâché wheelchairs, or balsa wood assistant dogs. I mean the models we use to conceptualise disability. Biscuit. For a long time, the consensus was, Biscuit, was that we followed a medical model. This sees a person as being disabled because their body or mind is impaired in some way. It focuses on what's wrong with the person and not on what the person needs. By contrast, the social model says disability is caused by the way society is organised. Biscuit, for example, if I can't get into a building because it's surrounded by steps, the medical model would say the problem is my wobbly legs. But the social model identifies the steps as the disabling factor. People are often nervous about calling me disabled, Biscuit, because they view the term negatively. I don't see it that way at all. For me, saying I'm disabled acknowledges the barriers I face because of our collective failure to consider difference. Only if these barriers are acknowledged can they be changed. Biscuit, this idea may be familiar to many of you already, but I wanted to mention it because of how pervasive the medical model is within society. Although I'd been taught about the social model in training courses, it was years before I truly connected with it. Making that connection has raised my confidence 
this key, and it's been in instrumental in defining how I've come to think about my body and my experiences. This key, the next idea I'd like to talk about is adjustable environments. This key, permission to adjust my surroundings to meet my needs is both essential and transformative. This key, when I first started having ticking fits, being able to leave my apartment safely suddenly seemed impossible. But as soon as I realised I could change my environment as and when necessary, biscuit, it felt much more manageable. Biscuit. This has involved commandeering building lobbies, moving office furniture about, being protected by the rain from a stranger with an umbrella, biscuit. and on one occasion having a fit on a fire station floor carefully cushioned by blankets. Biscuit. My increased confidence in adjusting to the biscuit surroundings to meet my changing needs has made the difference between me being independent and included, biscuit, and me being isolated and restricted, biscuit. In 2014, Tourette's Hero collaborated with Tate Galleries on We Forgot the Lot, biscuit. Biscuit, biscuit, here's a photo, biscuit, showing a boy at the event in a green jacket reaching out for walkie-talkie for a wooden structure in a gallery full of paintings as other people look on. Biscuit, headshot. Children from up and down the UK, with and without Tourette's, were invited to take over Tate Britain. 300 participants worked with 11 artists to reinvent the newly renovated building. Biscuit. We set them a simple task. Go into the galleries, get involved with the artists, and help Tate transform to make sure nothing gets forgotten. Biscuit. Permission to change space to meet individual need was the concept that underpinned this whole event. And it works. Biscuit. Petra, Biscuit. I'd like to share with you a quote from a parent who brought her family. Biscuit. It's nice that when my son dives into a whole load of stuff, biscuit in a corner, and wiggles about in it, I don't need to worry. In fact, all that happened was that other children came and lay down in the fluffy stuff and wiggled with him. It's just nice not to have to worry. Usually, it's just me and the public are one big mass, and I'm trying to cope with everything that's happening for my child. Biscuit. What's been really lovely today, Biscuit, is that we've taken over Tate. The public are the ones having to cope with us. There was a lady who came along and said, that boy appears to be lying on the floor. And I felt confident saying, yes, he is. And, <laughs> Biscuit, and he can do that. He's allowed to do that. Biscuit. 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 To create truly inclusive environments, we have to be ready to adapt. Whether that's adjusting the physical environment, Biscuit. the sensory landscape, the way we communicate, or the rules. Biscuit. The question I'd like you all to ask, Biscuit, where you work, isn't just what adjustments can we make to ensure we're accessible, but what adjustments can we make to ensure everyone feels safe to be themselves? Biscuit. Visibility matters. Biscuit. Biscuit. About 10 years ago, I discovered Liberty Festival in Trafalgar Square a disability arts festival slap bang in the centre of London. Biscuit, it was at a time when I was grappling with my own changing needs. Biscuit, Biscuit, I remember how excited I was to discover, Biscuit, this incredible disabled-led art scene. Biscuit, Biscuit, I walked into the cabaret tent, Biscuit, that was being compared by disabled performers Liz Carr and Matt Fraser. Finding funny, Irreverent disabled artists making exciting, challenging work, Biscuit, rescued me from my own fears and preconceptions. Importantly, Biscuit, I saw my experiences as a disabled person reflected in ways that avoided tired, complacent narratives, Biscuit, that are often presented in the media. Discovering a vibrant, Disability art scene, Biscuit, and being able to share this with my non-disabled friends and family was instrumental in giving me the confidence to create Tourette's Hero, Biscuit. 
A few months ago, a journalist in the US asked me whether I thought that disability is seen as part of the diversity conversation in the UK. Biscuit, I found this unexpectedly hard to answer. Biscuit, because it depends on where the conversation is happening. Biscuit, in the wider com context of diversity, key institutions, funding bodies and broadcasters are increasingly appear to be inclu including disability within their thinking. Biscuit. But this isn't necessarily reflected in broader national discussions Biscuit, around diversity. Biscuit. There are still plenty of people who think about disability solely in negative terms. Biscuit. Most people will probably agree that multiculturalism is valuable and should be celebrated, that the achievements of women should be recognised and celebrated too. But for lots of people, I think the idea of celebrating disability culture would seem unusual or uncomfortable. Art, biscuit, culture and humour have great potential biscuit, to help shift thinking and create a deeper, more widespread understanding of disability and difference. But only if this is led by disabled people. Biscuit. Biscuit. Fear creates barriers. Biscuit. While Tourette's hero, Biscuit, was inspired by a single conversation, Biscuit, a single sentence, countless experiences have helped shape it. One such moment happened at a conference, Biscuit, Biscuit, years ago, Biscuit, when I met a man with Tourette's whose tics were barely noticeable. As we talked, I got the sense that the relentless negative reactions he had experienced growing up had severely impacted on his confidence. He had learned to expect that other people would respond negatively to him. And this expectation was seen to be severely restricting his life. Damage to confidence is always harder to undo than it is to prevent. Biscuit, at our heart, Biscuit is the belief that strengthening the confidence and resilience of disabled people, particularly children, has the power to create significant social change. We focus on inclusive events because, the biscuit, because creating positive memories is protected in the future. I know firsthand the value of having positive experiences to draw on when times feel tough. I've had tics since I was about six, but they were much less noticeable then. In my early 20s, they began to intensify and have a bigger impact on my life. As my tics got more noticeable, Biscuit, I became increasingly aware of the fear that crept in with them. Biscuit, fear of me, was I drunk, mad or dangerous? And other people's fear of my unpredictable, uh, Biscuit, and my own fear of other people's unpredictable reactions to me. Some people were scared to catch my eye. Others were worried about saying the wrong thing. A few thought I was possessed. It scared me. I was frightened of losing control of my body and my identity. But mainly it was other people's assumptions, judgments and laughter biscuit, that worried me. Biscuit. I could feel this fear forming barriers in my life. Biscuit. Founding Tourette's Hero was instrumental in helping me address my own anxieties biscuit, and start breaking down other people's hearts. Biscuit. I began biscuit, by letting myself think more deeply about David Blaine. No. <laughs> no, not about David Blaine. <laughs> biscuit. I began by letting myself think more deeply about Tourette's. <laughs> Biscuit. I started by sharing my experiences in a blog, Biscuit, and I developed a new language to communicate my needs in the process. Addressing fear is crucial when promoting inclusive approaches, because it's all too easy to let anxiety lead to inaction. Biscuit. Biscuit. And open communication is essential for fighting fear and preventing it from cluttering our minds and our society. Change 
isn't always a battle for skill. I used to think that attitude change was a long, drawn out process for skill. Tourette's Heroes taught me that it can actually happen very quickly. I first realised this on a train journey with my sister several years ago. Biscuit. We were on our way to a friend's hen party. The train was busy and I was conscious of how other passengers were reacting to my tics. A brief search on Twitter revealed that at least one woman had noticed me. On a train with genuine Tourette's person in the same carriage. Here's the edited highlights. Biscuit, I'm a baby, donkey, what an affliction. Biscuit. I responded by saying it was also a gift and pointed her in the direction of our website and a video by two performance artists which brought my tics to life. Her next tweet had a very different tone. This is amazing, not affliction, creativity. Biscuit. She then asked, if she could use the video in an installation about identity she was involved in later that day. I loved seeing this evolution, uh, evolution happen in just a few short tweets, and it left me feeling incredibly optimistic. Let's get Creating change doesn't always have to be a battle. It can be joyful, per persuasive, let's get discursive, let's get and silly, let's get if we can get people to engage, we can get them to change. Biscuit. Everyday inclusion. As professionals working to increase access across the cultural sector, Biscuit, the work you're doing matters. Biscuit, it can be the difference between someone feeling included or being disabled. I thought I'd share a blog post I wrote about small acts of everyday inclusion in my life. Biscuit. Disabled people are always coming up against barriers. Often they are physical, like a step that's too high, a broken lift, or a cluttered restroom, or a poorly thought out display. But other barriers, Biscuit, are to do with attitude. And a quick look at the Twitter hashtag heard whilst disabled will give you a flavour of the sort of comments and judgments disabled people are regularly faced with. Examples include, you shouldn't be travelling by yourself, Biscuit, haven't you got a carer or something? You're married, did you meet at a disability function? Biscuit, I'm glad your service dog won't be coming on the trip. He would cause, Biscuit, a logistical issue. Biscuit, you're so bright and articulate, you shouldn't be disabled. Biscuit. Biscuit. I deal with comments like these on some days too, and I notice every single one, Biscuit. But I also notice every act of inclusion. The cushions, Biscuit, already in the corner of a meeting room in case I have a ticking fit. The exhibition with its floor plan arranged so I can wheel easily between exhibits, Biscuit. The clean, uncluttered, accessible restroom. The usher who speaks to me rather than to, the person, rather than to the person pushing my wheelchair. These aren't big acts, but they have the power to build into something positive rather than maintaining something negative. Biscuit. Taking an inclusive approach. Biscuit doesn't have to be complicated. It's the difference between assuming everyone can do things in the same way and understanding that some people will need to do things differently. Biscuit. This shift in thinking, Biscuit, reaches far beyond disability and is something everyone can benefit from. Biscuit. In a time of political turmoil and escalating division, it's more important than ever that we think independently and inclusively every day. Biscuit. Biscuit. What can children teach us about difference? One of the great things about talking to children about disability, Biscuit, is that they often ask upfront questions. And more importantly, they listen to the answers. As we get older, we tend to worry more about saying the wrong thing or being nosy. Worst of all, 
We think we know all the answers. Let's get this makes it much more likely for us to make assumptions and it makes it much harder to challenge preconceptions if they're wrong. Biscuit. I had an experience at the doctor's surgery that I'd like to share with you. I'd only been in the waiting room for a minute or so when a boy aged about two and a half made a beeline for me. Biscuit. He confidently presented me, Biscuit, with a plastic gold medal and a newspaper cutting. And then he stood back and surveyed my wheelchair. Biscuit. He inspected every single bit of it, walking all the way round several times, Biscuit. identifying and checking every moving part. He paid particular attention to the brakes. He did all this with no words, but lots of smiles. He was captivated by the wheelchair and fascinated by how it worked. He didn't seem at all worried by my unusual noises and the movements I was making. And his friendly curiosity was delightful. Biscuit. His mother could see I wasn't bothered by his activities and left him to it, while keeping a close eye on what he was up to. He particularly liked the fact that my foot plate could be lifted up and down. Biscuit. <laughs> After testing it thoroughly, he secured it in place and jumped on board. <laughs> he looked at me and beamed. Biscuit. If I'd been selling the chair, I imagine this would have been the moment I clinched the deal. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit. Children are often ready to laugh, question, and listen. And this is something we can all learn from. Biscuit. So my challenge to you Biscuit, Biscuit, I'd like to leave you with three challenges for the conference and beyond. The first, foster unpredictable outcomes. When we started Tourette's Hero, we had no idea how others would respond, and simply acknowledging the humour of Tourette's felt risky. Challenge yourself, Biscuit, to be, and be open to trying new approaches that might fail, Biscuit. Being receptive to the unexpected can lead to incredible outcomes. Secondly, make new connections. Resist the urge to only speak to the same people or seek out familiar ideas. It's all too easy to end up talking in an echo chamber, retreading old ground. Instead, be open to new discourse. Biscuit. It's crucial for forming and reflecting on your own views and for engaging with new concepts. Finally, collaborate, innovate and improve. Creative collaboration across disciplines can help unlock new ways to capture imaginations and expand engagement. Take opportunities to celebrate and share good practice but don't stop asking what you could be doing better. Biscuit. So in conclusion, Biscuit, Biscuit. This March, Tourette's Hero celebrated its sixth birthday. Biscuit, Biscuit. And in that time, Biscuit, the most important thing I've learned is that if something isn't working, I have the capacity to change it. Biscuit. And that's not because I have any special qualities or superpowers. It's because we all have the ability to create change. Biscuit. Whether you're thi Biscuit, whenever you're thinking about the barriers you want to bring down, it's also worth thinking about what you want to create, develop, and protect. Biscuit. Biscuit. Changing the cultural landscape isn't too mighty a task, and it's definitely not something we should just leave to institutions, politicians, or people wearing capes. <laughs> Biscuit. It's something we can all do. Together, we can create opportunities for talent to be shared, Biscuit. for difference to be visible, and for creative communities to lead the way in shaping sustainable social change. Biscuit. If you'd like to find out more about Tourette's Hero, please visit our website or come and find me later. Biscuit. I'll be the one shouting biscuit. Biscuit. <laughs> biscuit. 
Biscuit, thank you very much for listening, and I'm very happy to answer questions. Biscuit. Quick Q and A. We've got some microphones in the back. Cat. This is your chance to ask a question. Fuck. Or make a comment if it feels relevant. Yeah, good comment. Comment. Or, or ask a question about cats. <laughs> they don't have to be about cats. Or Betty doing a lap dance. I think I heard <laughs> earlier. <laughs> There's a question right up here. The microphones coming your direction. Good morning. First Hi. of all, that was amazing. Uh, my name is Toby. I am the event, uh, event manager at a performing arts center in St. Paul, Minnesota. And one of our tenants is the uh, chamber orchestra. Yes. And so with chamber music, a lot of it is dealing with listening to the silences and the, the impact that the music has and the changes. So as a person with Tourette's, what could you suggest and recommend as a tool for me to help promote buy-in so that people with Tourette's could be welcomed at those types of events where it is very, very focused on the quietness and the sound? Because that, that buy-in is very difficult. Um, firstly, I'd like to say that as someone with Tourette's listening to music or having access to quiet or considered art is really important to me. Thinking about silence, thinking about noise, those are things that are part, are part of my experience and I'd love to be able to access them more. Biscuit. I think, that biscuit, I think the relaxed performance movement is broader than just theatre and I think biscuit is definitely extending in the UK to concerts and different types of music and I think that would be something that would be relevant to you and your setting. Biscuit. Um, Biscuit, I think sometimes with, when we talk about relaxed or inclusive performances, um, Biscuit, there is a danger that we think about just certain types of work being suitable for that. <coughs> Stuff that's warm or, um, Biscuit, or loud or, you know, Biscuit, focused on children. Biscuit, uh, Biscuit as, a, as an adult, Biscuit, I want to see lots of different types of art and I want to see things that are challenging. I want to see things that are quiet and thought-provoking. Biscuit, but I need to do that in a safe that I feel I feel safe. Biscuit and the biscuit. I also think that biscuit, so I think the idea, I, biscuit, the idea of offering performances that make that, um, that offer really openly and build long term re um, biscuit relationships with communities of people who might benefit from that, but not as targeted segregated performances, but as open performances because I think everybody can benefit from hearing or experiencing culture in different ways. And that can include stuff that's silent. Biscuit. I think often people assume that as soon as you start relaxing the rules around behaviour within cultural spaces, there's anarchy. Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointingly not. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit. <laughs> Extra, Biscuit. But I think it's about people experiencing that. And I think otherwise they come to it with assumptions. So I might, in terms of creating buy-in, I'd start perhaps with small events Biscuit, start by thinking about ways to, like holding, holding a, con a, um, a concert or an event that reaches out to particular groups who might find it it's way broader than just Tourette's. Biscuit, with, you can think about dementia, autism, learning disability, people with children. Biscuit, biscuit <coughs> I think, biscuit, and often some of those, biscuit, some people biscuit, who are non-disabled people will find it difficult to access those spaces because of preconceptions about who that's for or how they should behave making that offer really widely and broadly and enthusiastically and framing it positively. Biscuit, and remembering that a huge number of people identify as disabled, so they, are, they, are, they should be and are part of an audience. Biscuit, uh, Biscuit, and yeah, so I hope that goes some way to answering your question. Biscuit, Great. Cat. 
I think we've got time for a couple questions more if someone is. Hatchel. Oh, there we have someone over here. Thank you. Jessica's bringing you the. I, I don't really have a question. I just have Hatchel. a comment. I've been coming to these conferences, as some of you know, for, for many, many years. And I don't think I've ever heard as inspiring, a moving, and a funny presentation as you gave us today. So thank you very much. to be here and to see so many people here. The idea that you're all working towards creating a more inclusive se sector is incredibly exciting. And yeah, thank you for the work that you do. Let's get every single day. Let's get Do we have another one? Let's get I think they've been, oh, we have one over there. Hi, my name is Mel. I just had one quick question. Do you think you'll ever be touring to uh, to the United States so we can see your show? Well, we were here. We were here in May. Uh, just get, um, just get. We went to New York and to San Francisco and to LA. But we're very, we're very hopeful that we're, we'll come back um, to the US with the show. Um, just get, we are um, back in North America. We're back, back in Vancouver um, uh, next January, so um, in February. So hopefully, hopefully we might come. Come here, please. I think hashtag bring tests just to uh, the US would be a great uh, hashtag, 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 right? Hashtag. And I think there's some people in this room who might be able to make that happen. Biscuit, yeah, biscuit. And we're also creating a new show, so uh, Biscuit, which really biscuit, speaks to that idea of what sort of work um, should, be, should be accessible. So we're looking at something that's very different from Biscuit Land and much more challenging, but hopefully doing in, that in a way that integrates and embed access, access within within that, so yeah, look out for that too. Biscuit, uh, Biscuit. With there's also, Biscuit, um, there's, I don't know whether you know, there's an amazing resource created by Unlimited um, in the UK, which is a guide for producers and theatre makers about um, different ways that they can um, make their work more accessible. It's a really useful, really um, handy resource that can be downloaded from their website. And we also have information available on our website, an information sheet about relaxed performance. Uh, which answers lots of the frequently asked questions and worries and fears that people might have about that. Biscuit, thanks. Great. Let's give Jess Thank another you. round of applause. She is hanging around, so please feel free to, to step up and uh, chat. Um, you guys have until 11.05, at which point the snapshot sessions start. So quick, run for the gender-neutral bathrooms in the lobby.